It is time for indie releases of July 2024. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to A Fictional Escapist. My name is Chris and today's video is our self-published fantasy releases or SFF releases, I should say, of July 2024. I love these lists. I love this video each and every month. It is going to hurt me a little bit more now I'm on a low buy year uh, to try and see if maybe they're on Kindle Unlimited and I can get them uh, for free or for the subscription fee. But regardless, if there's something that really catches my eye, chances are I've probably bought it or pre-ordered it and worked it into the budget. But as always, these lists do not come from me. They come from Rob J. Hayes' blog, which I'll put down below. If you have a book release coming out within the SFF genres, make sure you go ahead, save that list because you can pop it on there as soon as you've got a cover and a blurb for the month that it comes out. Before we jump into the video today, make sure to check in the description box down below for links to my social media and Discord, should you wanna come along for the ride. Now, there are some covers in here which are just so good. And these really work for me and probably for a lot of people who are vain and look at covers like myself, where I go, oh, that's a pretty cover, but it's a book three. What does book one look like? And then we go ahead and we order book one and then we're sucked into a never ending TBR. But that's okay. That's what it's all about. Let's jump in to the releases for this month. On the 1st of July, we had In the Shadow of Kings. This is by Philip C. Quintrell. And I hope I pronounced that correctly. I probably pronounced it wrong. And this is a Time of Dragons book number two. This, this first series from this author is definitely on my radar. I think this is a continuation series or it's a new series set in the same world. Someone let me know if you happen to know, but this is a book two. It is beautiful. The covers will all be up here, but we will have to move on. You all know the rules at this point. If it is a series continuation, we don't want to spoil anything for anyone. We have another one that came out on the 1st of July, and that is The Grandmaster's Gamble by Paul G. Zareth, or Zareth. Again, apologies about the pronunciations. This is the Night Worms Resurgence book number one, and it says, an unparalleled academic genius of his generation, Norman, has a bright future ahead. While he may be the rising star of the famed illustrious academy in the brutally competitive Irvenian sociopolitical landscape, opp opportunist vultures lurk at every corner and no tactic is too low. That was a mouthful. The biggest obstacle in the way of his grand ambitions, though, is an ancient alien parasite that has made his body its nest. Oh, and there is also the problem of a high-profile murder investigation that is likely to destroy his career. Will Norman be able to reassert control over his life, or will he succumb in his pursuit of the forgotten arts of soul harvesting and become something else? Find out in this cyberpark in this cyberpunk, in this grim, dark, cyberpunk fantasy we got there in the end. Sometimes being the best among the best is still not good enough. That sounds intriguing, and I'm very interested in looking at what that is all about. Another one on the 1st of July we had was Michael Webb's next one in the Shadow Knight series, and this is Shadows of Hope. In a battle for the kingdom, only one can win. Now, I believe this is a YA series. Michael Webb has been on my radar for a little while now, and what was putting me off was that YA, I know I've been a snob in the past, I'm trying to change my ways and just enjoy what I enjoy. I've read some fantastic YA, sorry about hitting the mic there, and this may be a series that I look to get into at some point. I have to check out the cover because it's looking very Jeff Brown, but it is a book six, so let's move on from there. And on the 6th of July, we had The Wolf of Wilmore Manor. This is by Kieran Weisenberg with an interesting-looking cartoon-esque cover. It says this is a horror entry, which we don't see a lot of on these lists, but I'm, I'm glad that horror is making a an appearance here. This one says, A wolf lurks among them. When nine strangers are invited to a remote mansion for a supernatural weekend getaway, mystery is bound to follow. Mystery is bound to follow in that particular situation. The guests arrive to find their host dead, murdered by a werewolf, or so it seems. In the black halls of Wilmore Manor, nothing is certain. As suspicions rise and bodies pile up, those left standing are faced with a terrible proposition. Find the killer, solve the puzzle, or submit to perishing themselves. That sounds like it's a hoot and a half, not so much for the people in the house. On the 7th of July, we have an entry from an author who is just next level at putting out books. This is like Brandon Sanderson level of speed that these books come out. This is the Magic Kingdom at War, which is book number three. 
in this series by Tao Wong. One throw of the dice to win it all. I think we only talked about book one a couple of months ago, but book three is now coming our way. On the 9th of July, we had Herald by the man himself, the man who creates these lists, Rob J. Hayes. This is the Age of the God Eater, book number one, and it is epic fantasy. Now, this series is coming out in a very interesting way. So what Rob is doing is releasing the book ones of this series. There are nine books in total. There are three separate trilogies. I believe that over different timelines, I'll go ahead and put Rob's link and explanation down below if I can find it. But I know I backed the Kickstarter, which I have all three book ones coming and then you read all three book ones all three book twos all three book threes it's going to be a very interesting reading experience but i know that rob does not shy away from doing things a little bit differently harold says a thousand years ago humanity's greatest heroes killed god now under the brutal rule of warrior kings the land of hell Hel- Hel- has fallen to chaos Demons stalk the deep forests, monsters roam free of their prisons beneath the world vein, and ancient terrors rise again. History is written in blood, but the future will be forged in holy fire. Rhaenyra Washer lives the dreary life of a laundry girl, dreaming of adventure. When a stranger from her mother's past appears with a dire warning, Rhaenyra's peaceful life is shattered and she's thrown headfirst into a millennia-old war between heaven and earth. In Rhaenyra's blood hides a secret. The angels are not all gone. Only the Herald can ring in the Fifth Age. Only the Herald can bring the god back to life. Rob has not missed with me yet. I've read four. No, I've read six of Rob J. Hayes' books, and I'm looking forward to reading more. On the 11th of July, we had Murder on Hunter's Eve. This is the Lamp Light Murder Mysteries by Morgan Stang. We all remember Morgan Stang's first book got really high up, if not one, Spiffbo 9. I'll double check that out and I'll put the information down on the screen. I think it actually did win. This is a gas lamp murder mystery. Uh, a werewolf terrorizes the city of Lamplight. Now, I don't know if these are all some standalones in one world, but I don't want to read the blurb just in case it does contain a spoiler. So we'll move on. But the cover is stunning. I love blacks with pops of color just delightful. Also on the 11th of July, we had a Throne of Blood. This is Battleborn Mage book three by Angel Hayes. And this is another series that I'm very interested in reading at some point, hopefully before I perish. Amid the King's death, magic storms rage, spreading fear amongst the mages. I've heard really good things about Angel Hayes' writing. I'm looking forward to getting to it at some point, but it is a book three. On the 16th of July, remember when I said that sometimes covers are so good, but they're books later in the series, so you go and you look at the first book and then you end up with the first book. That happened with this one. This is The Fire Eye Hunted by Samuel Gately in the Fire Eye book number three this is in the epic fantasy series. This cover is so beautiful. It's just... I love purple, I love the yellows, it all really works for me, and the rest of the covers in the series are just as delightful. So, feast your eyes on that one before we scroll down. On the 17th of July, we have the Famine Cycle box set. This is by J.D.O. Rizal. So these books are out, but the box set is now being released, and it is up here. This is what it looks like in all of its glory. A roguish sorceress, an ancient dragon god, the war over a dying world. Arian the Finch is a scrappy peddler of rumours ac- accustomed to icking out a living amongst the shadows, but fate has grander plans for her. When the king is assassinated and her brother vanishes without a trace, Ar- Arianne is thrust into a perilous journey. To save her brother and unravel the mystery of the king's death, Arianne must embrace a destiny she never imagined. As a warden, a master of sorcery, and a pivotal figure in the survival of the Four Realms. But wielding such power comes at a dire cost, and every secret she uncovers demands a greater sacrifice. In a world teetering on the brink of ruin, Arianne's choices will shape the future of kingdoms and the balance of divine forces. Can she defy the will of a god, or will the price of her secrets be too steep to pay? J.D. Rizal is an author I desperately need to read more of. I've only read The uh, Last Hunter, or The Last... I have it on the shelves. Um, The Last Ranger of the Titan Wilds, I think, is the series name. And I need to read more of his stuff. I think I own a few of these books in the Famine Cycle or another series, and I will get to it, but that sounds fantastic. On the 17th of July, we have The Sword of Elves by Luis Falcao de 
MAGA Hells. I probably butchered that, and I am so sorry. This is Sword and Sorcery, and I love the cover. Maybe I just love green. You put green on your cover, and I'm pretty much sold. It says, Freya Diamand was once the most dreaded swordswoman of the Circle C. Now war has taken everything from her ship, her crew, her lover. Hope is rekindled when a sorceress tome transports her to a hidden valley halfway across the continent. There she finds the love she thought dead, alive and unharmed. But she has traded one prison for another, for a mighty enchantment that secures the valley's borders, making escape impossible and often fatal. When the pair tries to break the spell, they are caught and taken to the lost kingdom of the elves, where they meet the young and ambitious mage Sandala St. Hannah. The elf offers to help them steal the magical artifact powering the valley's enchantment, and he will send them home. Yet the artifact is hidden deep within an ancient elven temple and is guarded by more than steel, trap, and spell. It has a will of its own, and the shadow it casts threatens to consume Frida and her companions long before the journey's end. That sounds like it's going to be a really fun ensemble cast, and uh, I'm very interested in that one. This art style, the next cover, is something that I really like, and there's a three-eyed cat, and I'm just very, very curious. And this is The Thief in the Wild by Sean Barber, and it is a steampunk sci-fantasy gas lamp story. New Alms is a city of sin and vice, populated by all manner of criminals. The ruling Krenite priests can barely keep order, not that they or anyone else for that matter ever try too hard. It's a den of cutthroats and thieves. And there ain't many thieves out there as talented or skilled as Jackson Valor. When, Jackson when Jackson's hired by a priest to steal an old mask, he thinks it's just another job. But that's before he sees the blasphemous shrine it's housed in, before he starts getting followed around by bugs and birds and three-eyed cats, before he finds out that the mask was a vessel for the wild god Fenegris, and that by Filching it, he's invited the enemy of civilization to take up residence inside his head. This sounds wild. Now to save his own mind, Jackson's going to have to team up with the very wild cult he stole the mask from and take it back to the Krenat Temple, but the priests have their own plans for the wild god's artifact. They have their own ambitions for new arms, and Jackson's about to learn there ain't no room in their design for no good criminal scum like him. That sounds fantastic. That one has shot up to my will I buy it and put it into my budget pile. On the 23rd of July, we have the next book from Rob J. Hayes, which is technically still a book one, so we can go ahead and read the blurb. This is Deathless, by, which is the Annals of the God Eater, book number one, and it is part of the wider God Eater saga. Seven were the godless kings who took their war to heaven. King Erdite Hostain, Er Ertide, Ertide Hostain, was once known as the Crimson Prince. He fought side by side with angels and Pegasi and defended the Sant Diem Empire against monsters. But his pact with heaven has become strained. He has grown old, his body rots, and he has yet to choose which squabbling prince will be his heir. The Hostian dynasty has ruled over the empire for millennia, but when Ertide finds cryptic notes from his dead father, he realizes all is not what it seems. Has history been rewritten, rewritten, and if so, what is heaven hiding? Heaven hiding. Immortality has a price, and it's paid in blood. Oh, I love that line. I do very much enjoy it. On the 23rd of July, we have one that I have read. It's delightful. Everyone should go ahead and pre-order it. And this is The Bartender Between Worlds by Herman Stuenagel. This is the greatest in the multiverse book number one. And it has so much potential to be such a cool, cozy series i really enjoyed it as someone who doesn't naturally gravitate towards something cozy this definitely had enough in there to keep me entertained in terms of plot we had some world jumping we had some low stakes magic and it was just delightful low stakes magic crafting cocktails and discovering the power of who we truly are emma grew up as a hunter of the cursed those charged with eradicating monsters and magic from the kingdom she's good at it too and is revered as one of the king's most skilled hunters at least she was, until she discovered she possessed magic herself. Before anyone else can discover her secret, Emma abandons her post and flees to the far edges of the kingdom, where she hopes she can settle down and live a quiet life as a bartender, out of the hunter's watchful eyes. Fate, however, won't allow us to run away from who we are so easily. 
when Emma is confronted by an exiled fairy and a man who claims to be a scientist, though Emma is convinced he's a sorcerer, she must evaluate what she believes and the confines of who she's been allowed to be. Pulled on a journey that takes her further than she'd ever imagined possible, Emma is led on an adventure to discover where her fate lies and must confront her own biases, hopefully learning a drink recipe or two along the way. This was really delightful, like I said, and I hope people pick it up. On the 30th of July, and to close out our list this time around, we have Unfamiliar by J.E. Hannaford, and it's also another entry into Cozy Fantasy. And this cover just looks so delightful. <laughs> it looks like uh, people are going to have a good time if they pick this one up. It says, After watching all which Gorn's familiars disappear through a portal, Eva Eclipse has to face the fact that she has lost her protectorate's familiars just before they host their magical inter-village games, along with her chance at competing for the first time. With no idea who stole them and no way to work it out before the games begin, the Protectorate might be facing a harmless prank or something far more nefarious. Can the village of Witchgorn pull together to get through a competition where they are the only competitors not using magic, and will Eva find more than a chance to compete? And will Eva find more than a chance to compete as her need to find a fake familiar brings an old friendship back to life. It sounds like it's going to be very cute. The cover looks very cute. And uh, if anyone reads this one, let me know if I should try another cozy and I might give it a go. I definitely have got some of Jay Hannaford's work uh, on my radar. I've got a couple of the books back on the shelf there that I really need to get to. That was a list for the month of July. What are you picking up? Did anything catch your eye? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like the content, Give one of those, and if you want to see more of it, click subscribe at your will, and I, I will catch you in the next video. Ciao.